good afternoon my friends welcome back to the channel hitchhiking yeti here and guess what today we're not at no beach there is no sand there is no ocean i have made my way to the western part of north carolina we are in what they call the foothills of north carolina so uh i'm in wilkes county just to give you a little idea a little bit of nascar country i'm gonna show you a little sign over here that i think it's pretty dang cool. Check that out. Is that not a relic? If you are a fan of racing, how can you not love this? This is an old sign left over from back in the day. NASCAR Winston Cup Series Coca-Cola 400 September 15th. And then over here, it's starting to chip away. It's kind of missing. But that's supposed to be the Holly Farms 400, September 29th, 1996. North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway. At one time, I could tell you this sign was the last time NASCAR ran at the racetrack. Jeff Gordon actually won the last race at North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway. And that is the advertisement for that very race. I wanted to show you this. I actually seen this when I was here a few months ago for the return of NASCAR to North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway. I was here for the All-Star Race. If you have been watching my channel back in May, you might would have known. I did three straight nights. I did Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night of my experience. I documented it, what it was like. Had a pretty good time, man. Gotta say, man, it was a lot of fun. I'd definitely do it again if opportunity comes up. But I definitely want to show you this because the opposite side of that sign has already been replaced. It don't have anything to do with NASCAR no more. So uh, I wanted to make sure I show you this. Point of today's vlog, we're here in North Wilkesboro. I made my way over here. We're going to go check out the racetrack because it's just a few miles right down this road. Uh, we will drive around the racetrack from a distance and kind of look and see how it looks and see how things are coming along, see if they made any other changes. Then I want to move over to the downtown area of North Wilkesboro, which is going to be interesting for me because I've not walked the streets of North Wilkesboro in quite some time. Uh, probably back in the 80s, my mom and dad used to take me up there and we would go to the Apple Festival. And uh, I remember that being a good time. It had to be because we used to go quite often. And uh, so that's what my plan is today. And then you can't come to North Wilkesboro without talking about a very legendary nascar pioneer for this area talk about junior johnson his race shops i just talked to a friend of mine the other day he said he lives up in this area he said the race race shops are still around obviously there's no race team in them no more since he sold that stuff back in i think 1996 so uh we're gonna go check them out see how see what they look like i think there might just be antique stores this day and time but i just want to see where the legendary race shops are located never seen them before that being said, let's get started. We got a lot of stuff to see today. Should be fun. Let's go check out North Wilkesboro downtown area. But we're gonna go check out the, the racetrack first. I mean, come on. You don't come up here and not drive by the racetrack. That's just insane. That's silly. And right here is the entrance. They even got their signage up. There you go, NASCAR returns North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway, September 30th, 2023. Brushy Mountain Power Sports, 150 North Wilkesboro Speedway. I be though, modified. All right, friends, I drove up here to the racetrack because I wanted to check out this signage. Now, I don't remember seeing this when I was here, back here for the All-Star Race. It might have been here because I didn't drive. I didn't come outside the racetrack. You know, I was on the back side. But I love that. It says, welcome back. And it's got that very prominent North Wilkesboro Speedway sign. North Carolina, USA established 1947. The legend lives on. That is just too cool. Man. That is awesome. All right. We are going to turn around now. And hit up town. Let's go up to North Wilkesboro uptown area and see what's happening up there. And then we're going to go see if we can hunt down Junior Johnson. 
old race shops. Up here in the moonshine country, the foothills of North Carolina. And this is when you know you're in North Wilkesboro. Check this old Jimmy Spencer wreck race car out here, number 23 on it. Check that out. Jimmy Spencer. That is old school. Look at all the dang beer cans. Dang, Jimmy. You was a drinking rascal. No wonder you wrecked everybody. Just kidding. Just a joke. <laughs> That's pretty awesome, though. That is pretty cool. Look at that. All right, friends, I have made it to the downtown area here in North Wilkesboro. And my positioning where I'm going to start walking around is right here on the corner of 10th Street and Main Street. So right here is Main Street as you see the Pelican Snowballs right across the street there. And then right out of the gate we see this sign talking about the Apple Festival. Apple Festival Park, Brushy Mountain Apple Festival. Which I believe will take place October 7th, 2023 here in town. And look at the side of that building. That thing looks very old and withered for sure. Hopefully we can find us some good murals here in town. I love seeing those old ghost murals on the side of some buildings. It's pretty awesome. And speaking of murals, look at this place. It's kind of decorated up with murals all over it. You got some, some picking up here. A little banjo, a little bluegrass playing. Has some chickens down here. It's just like, just art on the side of the bricks and stuff on the side of this uh, building. How awesome is this? That is pretty cool. As you see, they have Lowe's up here. But if I remember correctly, way back in the day, I think Lowe's had like a central office or something here in the area that employed a lot of people. Don't know if that's still open or not, but I think that's why that's significant. I don't think that's why that's up there. And of course, you know why NASCAR is here. Because this is NASCAR country. And over here, we have some little pottery going on. But I want to take a closer look at this door. Now, I'm not a huge bluegrass person, but I guarantee these three people on this doorway here that's been painted are famous if you're a bluegrass fan. Or maybe they're just local famous. I don't know, but I know there's a lot of, a lot of picking that went on up in this area back in the day. If you know who any of those men are, please put in the comment section down below if you recognize them. But man, that's pretty cool. I was just walking down Main Street and I looked over to the left and I seen all this artwork on the side of the building. I'm like, oh man, that's cool. So Main Street's right over here. And uh, it's a little far away. It's, you know, it's a block and a half away, but if I see something like that, I gotta go check it out. And right here, we're, we just found another place. This is called the Record Thursday Printing. Look at all this old vintage stuff in here. Taylor change making machine. Look at that. Wow. Got these old bottles. I hope they ain't too much glare. Look at that old 7-Up bottle right there. Very rare Art Deco cast iron Christmas tree stand. Check that out. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but wow. That's a find. Oh my gosh, look at that. Is that really him? The six million dollar man? Is that Lee Majors? Who also played as the Fall Guy in one of my favorite TV shows? They got this old tin metal belt uh, me uh, lunchbox. I get it out, man. I'm all tongue tied, man. I got so excited. Look at that. Oh man, this old typewriter. This place is pretty damn cool. Unfortunately, it's closed right now and I can't go inside. Some old marbles. I used to like marbles. Wow, check that out. Put the mailbox on there. It's like a 
a way to weigh yourself, you know. <laughs> Look at all this old stuff. Those old canes, like walking canes I have in there. The old Mountain Dew bottle. Man, this must be some kind of antique shop. Here's an old radio that belonged to my mother, Carrie. She listened faithfully to the obituaries. Man, I know my grandma and my mom does that today. She's always reading obituaries or something, even though they used to, I guess they called it out over the radio shows back in the day. Look at all that old stuff. That is pretty awesome. Man, I would love to go in there. Check that out. Old Pepsi sign up here. That is pretty cool. What else we have up here? The American Drew, where it all begins, Lumberyard. All right, let's see what else we can see as we walk down Main Street here in the town of North Wilkesboro. I know one thing that I'm looking for while I'm here, there used to be an old like train depot area. And that is a very prominent memory in my mind when I was here for the Apple Festival back in the day. Cause I remember it was really sunny and hot that day. And and uh, my dad was like, hey, I know where some shade is. And he we went over there and stood up underneath that, that awning on that old uh, train depot which I think is still around. I think it's like uh, kind of important to the community and so it's, uh, it's like a historic marker now. So uh, I'm gonna go, let's go look, look for it too while we're here. All right, I've made my way up here to the corner of Main Street and Ninth Street. And right here we have Town Hall. And right across from Town Hall, we have some murals or a mural on the side of the building. And then we have some ghost signage also up here you can actually see, I think I used to say drugstore right there. And this is actually for a prescription drugstore. I guess that's a local place. And then it looks like you can kind of make out cola right there. And it kind of reminds me of the old Pepsi Cola font, but it's just hard to tell. It's just so worn out and kind of faded away. You can't really see it very well, but I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for stuff like this. I love finding old murals that's kind of weathered. But not that weathered. I do like to be able to make out what they are. Check that out. That's a pretty cool mural on this wall down here. Right next to the uh, the police station is actually this big gray building right here. It says, Welcome to North Wilkesboro, North Carolina. And it extends all the way down through there. And they got some kind of like stage right here. Window World presents concerts on the deck. And I guess that's the deck. That's where the show will be. But right over here is what I come down here to actually check out. This building, this roof, it kind of extends down through here. This is my memories. This is the old train station, depot, whatever you want to call it. I think it was the Southern Train System or Southern Rail. I can't remember the name of it, but this has got to be it. Dang, look at that. That is definitely it because I remember us standing right here on this corner. And I remember that was our shade because it was so hot out here. And I think the Apple Festival, I don't think it was on this road. I think it was actually up there on Main Street. I mean, you're talking the 80s when this all happened. So I can't really remember perfectly, but I do remember seeing this structure and I remember us going to it. And the train tracks are kind of grew, grow up. They're still there. They're kind of down here in that grass. You can barely kind of make them out. When I zoom in, there's where the train tracks used to be. But I think this has long been closed down by the looks of things over the years. There's nothing, there's no train choo chewing out through there no more, that's for sure. <laughs> and right here is the front entrance to the town of North Wilkesboro Police Department. Right there's where you go. Look at this, these steps right here. Wow, that looks interesting. We have to walk down in this old alley here. Look at the mural up here on the side of the wall. 
golly, you can't really. Can you see that? It says eat mountain made ice cream. It's got an ice cream cone up there. What a weird place. You know, I would say this is an old mural and maybe it is an old mural, but I don't know. That thing looks like it's been touched up recently. You know, it looks like it's in really good shape, but nobody can really see it. I mean, it's up really high. And you can walk by here, by this here almost reminds me of the movie, The Joker. You know where he's dancing down the steps in the movie? That's what these steps remind me of. I mean, come on, check that out. That looks very similar. They're not as long, but it's just like a kind of a spooky, you know, alleyway here. Where it's like either the Joker's gonna show up or Batman's gonna show up and help you. But I know one thing, I bet at night it's really spooky when it's, when it's just this light illuminating the walkway. Just that one light, just a shape of it. It's got that old school spooky style to it. And there's one more right there. <laughs> this is why you come to these little small towns that you've never really been to and explored before. You find all kinds of little nooks and crannies. To check out and I see we have a brushy mountain apple festival sign up here first Saturday in October I think I was correct for saying what I said that would make it October 7th tell you one thing if I'm here in the area at that moment in time I'm gonna be here I come to the apple festival I ain't been one in so many years It'd be like, it'd be like my first time all over again. <laughs> okay, we're gonna cross the street now and see what we can see on the other side of the street. And then we're gonna see if we can find Junior Johnson's old race shops up here. If you are ever in the area, they have this place right here, the Lost Wombat. What a cool name. Look at that wombat they got painted up there on the wall. It's a pretty cool looking place. Got a place up there for kids to play. A little jungle gym area maybe. A little uh, climbing walls. Got some outdoor seating. And I hear, I just talked to somebody that just came out of there. And uh, they say they got a pretty good, pretty good nachos in there. Trash can nachos is what they call them. Right here is the entrance to the Lost Wombat. And then right next door to the Wombat, Lost Wombat, let me say it correctly, is the Liberty Theater. Check that out, Fly High Crow Church. All shows, $5. Pretty good deal. I like the, uh, I like the old design of the building here. It's really cool looking. As you can see right here, they have the self-claimed world's best popcorn since 1932. I love popcorn. Here's one of the movies they're showing. They got the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutant Mayhem. I used to be a fan of these guys. I think he was my favorite. Yeah, the M. That means he's Michelangelo. He was the one that said dude all the time. That was one I was into. That was Leonardo. That's Raphael. And right back there is Donatello. So I found some wing art on the wall here in this alleyway. This is on Gordon Avenue, where you can uh, step in front of the wings and do a little selfie and Instagram it up. And uh, the cool, the cool one they have, a, they have one for everybody. You got your adult one. Then over here you have your, well, not adult but kid. I don't know how old, ten. Maybe a ten-year-old could stand in front of that and it'd be about right. And then you can go on down to a toddler maybe <laughs> and try to help them stand up in front of that one and stay still just for a minute while I take your picture while they walk this way and walk that way anybody has kids around you know they ain't gonna stay still long for no picture so good luck with that one <laughs> and here we have a pretty cool place this is like a collectible shop they have all kinds of NASCAR collectibles in there sports jerseys check that out 
I thought it was the Blues Brothers when I first looked at it, but it's not. It's actually Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire. Look how little Mark McGuire is. That is definitely before he started getting juiced up, hitting all those home runs he hit in the 90s. <laughs> they call them the Bash Brothers. That's pretty cool. Pretty awesome. It's actually closed right now. It's called Pop's Place. It has some more signage right up here. It says, Welcome to Pop's Place, the man, the myth, the legend. That's pretty cool. Oh, man, that's a relic right there. Look at this car they have. That is a Junior Johnson Special. That's the number 23 Smoking Joe's Camel car. Driven by Mr. Excitement. Jimmy Spencer. And then right next to that, we have another model car. The 28 Haviland car. That could have been driven by Davey Allison for all I know. Quite a few drivers drove that car over the years. Davey, Ernie. You know, even Dale Jarrett got a start in that car for a brief stint before he drove the 88. And then finally, after Kenny Irwin, you had uh, Ricky Rudd ran really good in that car. Who else we got in there? Oh, I see my favorite driver. That's right there in that winter circle car. That is the Ford Credit Quality Care 88 car of Dale Jarrett from Hickory, North Carolina. Right below that, that would be Daryl Waltrip's car when he owned his own car, the Western Auto car, number 17. Pretty cool. And then, I don't know if you can see it, but right there is a Dale Earnhardt kind of kneeling on one knee. Little collectible. So now I want to come over here and see, because I think I've seen the poster of the movie, The Program. It come out back in the 90s. It was a, it was a movie, kind of a realistic take on uh, college football. And I remember being in high school, man, I loved that movie. And uh, that was a good movie. I forgot all about that movie. It's been so many years ago, but I remember watching that movie and... Because I love college football back in that time. That's back when I was a big Florida State fan. I love Bobby Bowden. And those Seminole teams back in the 90s were, were so much fun to watch. And they were so dang good. And uh, I think when I watched the movie, The Program, I kind of felt like the movie with the colors... With their, with their colors in that movie, I can't remember what their mascot was. It wasn't the Seminoles or anything, but they had the same color palette that the Knowles had, you know? And uh, I remember really enjoying that movie. I, I was one of the people who went to the movie theater and watched it. Uh, before they cut one of the scenes out of the movie, there was a scene in the movie where the football players, for whatever reason, thought it'd be fun to go out in the middle of the road and lay down on like the yellow line as, as traffic's going down the road for like rush to see how tough you are, just crazy stuff like that. And uh, lo and behold, what happened? Kids seen that. There was some kids somewhere around the world that went and did it, and I think somebody got ran over. And so they ended up removing that from the movie. So uh, I got to see like the scene that nobody else has really got to see. Unless you went in the, like, the first week or so when that movie come out, you didn't get to see that movie with that scene in it. All right, friends. Pop's place was pretty cool. I would really like to come back and take a walk into a place like that and look at all the collectibles he has inside. A lot of neat stuff just in the window shopping alone. I love old relics like that. That old Jose Canseco and Mark McGuire poster he had, he had out there was really cool. Um, so that being said, there's only one thing left to do as the sun begins to dip. Before it goes behind these mountains here, we need to make our way to the Junior Johnson Race Shops. So let's go get my GPS locked in and hopefully there's something still there to look at. All right, so now we're on Highway 24-1. We're actually leaving the North Wilkesboro City and headed toward the Junior Johnson shops. As you can see right there is the North Wilkesboro Motor Speedway. Looking good. Right here is the bridge that we drove across earlier. And it shouldn't be too much further, my friends. And we'll be exiting onto one of these little side country roads. And that supposedly is where Junior Johnson's old race shops are. And uh, I think from what I've read online, I think his home for him and Flossie, his uh, first wife, um, 
where they lived is like right next door to us. So we kind of keep our uh, eyes peeled on that and kind of see if it's if it's still there. You know, both of them are passed away now, and I don't know what happened to their estate or whatever. Um, they wasn't even married at, at the time of their death. Uh, Junior actually uh, separated from her years ago, and I think he, he remarried to someone else and actually had another kid or two. So uh, we just push forward here and look for our exit. Whenever Google tells me to exit, I'm gonna exit. Yeah, this is it right here. Yeah, Ingle Hollow Road, no outlet. So this would be it. Yeah, man, this right here is it. This here is the old Junior Johnson race shops. Wow. I wonder if we can turn around and go pull in. This is no outlet. I'm just going to get out of here and just back up. This is definitely it. Man, this is pretty awesome right here. So this right here is the old race shops. Junior Johnson Racing. Sorry about if the picture is all kind of lit up. Look at this stuff. Man. And that right there, I wonder if that's their house. That was their house right over there, right across the bridge. So all the interviews I used to read, they always talked about his uh he had multiple race shops like i think when neil bonnet come along maybe that's what that is right over there is also a building and i think they always said it was across the creek so either that was the first shops or this was the first shops really not sure but man i'm glad i finally came out here and just seen this spot this area This is pretty cool. How awesome is this? So this this is it though. This here is where all these great drivers, their cars were built by Junior Johnson and his teams. Kel Yarborough, Daryl Waltrip, Neil Bonnet, so many great ones. Bill Elliott even at one time, maybe even uh, Jeffrey Bodine. Didn't he drive for him I believe? Man, that is so cool. God, I would love to go across that bridge right there just to see what that runs into, but I don't guess I will. No, I don't know which one of these places. I don't even, you know, I, somebody said these places turn into a, uh, like an antique store, but I see no signage or anything. And I wonder if that there's where they built the engines. I wonder if that was like the engine shop because it looks a little bit different i don't see no really huge they got one garage door there but it's not like the other bays where it had the other buildings had multiple that looks like an engine shop i'm just don't get i'm just don't think that's an engine shop all right let's go right out here and take a right and there should be a road right here called flossy lane and that was uh junior johnson's wife's name was flossy they say she made some really good fried chicken. So yeah, right here in front of us, that there is Junior Johnson and Flossie's old house. And then you can look right up the street here. Their drive keeps going. And right up in there is his old chicken houses. You can see the rusted roof on top of them. So that's pretty cool. And now that I'm looking at it from this direction, you can see that is another shop right there. That's the other shop, because I always hear he had two shops, and it was on either side of a creek, and there's a creek that runs right through these, these woods right here. That is pretty awesome. All that history right here. And right there is the creek. And there's the shops. That is amazing. All right, friends, we are going to wind this video down. I have driven maybe three miles or so away from Junior Johnson's old race shops, and I'm going to bring you now to his final resting place.
We are located here at Pleasant Grove Baptist Church. And we're going to walk out here and go pay our respects to this great pioneer of NASCAR motorsports. So this is it. We're about to see the final resting place of a living legend of NASCAR racing. A real pioneer of the sport, Junior Johnson. Do you know, I, I, I kind of I heard this somewhere one time before we look at his grave. I think he was actually responsible for uh, the Winston Cup Series. Like he was responsible. I think Winston came to him, the cigarette company came to him and wanted to buy sponsorship of his race car. And he was like, how much money do you have? <laughs> what a great, what a great question, right? And they, and they told him, and it was like a lot more than what he needed for a race team. And being the type of person he is, he said, let me introduce you to someone else. And he introduced them, I guess, to the France family. And then they signed the deal. And that's how you got the Winston Cup Series of Racing, which was a proud sponsor for over 20 years. I think all the way up to 2003. Who was the last Winston Cup Series champion? Matt Kenseth. Is that right? Maybe. Tell me in the comments if you know. I think it was Matt Kenseth. D Walt, number 17, Jack Rouse. I believe so. So, that being said, I got that little story out of the way. Now let's look at the graves. <laughs> so, yes, we have Robert Glenn Jr. Johnson, born June 28th, 1931, died December 20th, 2019. And it has a little inscription down there. It said, Loving father, devoted husband, last American hero. That is pretty epic to have on your grave, on your headstone. And right here next to him, it says Fred Johnson. And he's actually has some uh, some checker flags up here. He must have been some kind of racer too. And maybe I should know his name. I don't know. I don't know Fred Johnson right off the top of my head. But uh, he was a little bit older than Junior if they were brothers. December 11th, 1929, and Junior was born June 28th, 1931. Fred passed away January 7th, 1991, so he, he was still somewhat young. He was quite a bit younger than Junior when he passed. Man. Well, all right, friends. I guess that being said, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I don't know what this video is going to look like. It was a lot of uh, ducking and diving for me today to put this thing together. I had to do a lot of tracking around and stuff. And uh, I almost backtracked to come here from where we started the video. So, uh, but thanks for hanging in there. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this little vlog today. If you're any kind of fan of Junior Johnson or NASCAR racing and things like that, you know, I'm an old fan myself. And, uh... I have I have a little memories of Junior. Like I said, he sold his team about the time I was getting in the NASCAR. But I've heard enough stories from ex-drivers of his, and I got a kick out of all of them, especially Dale Waltrip. He's he is one of the best storytellers, man. I can watch him talk like all day, and I used to because I used to watch Fox. So uh, I used to love watching him uh, call the races and tell stories and stuff. And he'd always every once in a while, at least once or twice a season. He'd have a Junior Johnson story to share with everybody about some race they was in and what happened. And this reminds me of that moment. So uh, all that being said, I'm all done. Thank you so much for watching today. Friends, I'm the Hitchhiking Yeti. And I will see you in our next adventure. Y'all stay safe out there. And so long. And there's a lot of cows back here. I don't know if you can see them. There's a lot of cows. They, they've not moved any. When I hit the record button. But before I hit the record button. They were moving away. They're like. Hay over there. Do you have any hay? <laughs> I'm tired of this green grass. I want some hay. I want something else. You know. Alright. That's just silly. See y'all later. <laughs>